Welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I get to talk to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our community. What did they do to get started and what are they doing to stay there, to stay in that leadership lane? And today, oh my goodness, I have a special guest. His name is Jed Gifford. Jed is the Talent Acquisition Manager at Hernco. And you might know another company that is associated with Hearn Co. And that is D&M Leasing. Jed, so excited to have you on the show, man. Great to be here, Bruce. Thanks for the invitation. Time I get a chance to, to connect and chat with you. It's, it's a bonus. You know, last, uh, last time we connected, I was thinking back. You know, uh, we've met a while back at ATD, mm-hmm. which uh, for those who don't know, that's the Association for Talent Development. Uh, but we also, I started to think our last face-to-face may have been LinkedIn Live when they came to Dallas back in 2019. It was, it was, it was pre, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic when we met in person at the Dallas Convention Center. You bet it was, uh, that was a great event. And, and fortunately, with it being in Dallas, we were, were fortunate to uh, both attend. We didn't have to get on a, on a plane and travel somewhere. <laughs> oh man, that was fantastic. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to a mutual friend of ours, and that is Beth G with Partnership Employment. She uh, reached out and said, hey, you know what? Have you had Jed on the show yet? I'm like, no, I've got him on my list. So let's get him on. So let's give a shout out to Beth. Yes, fantastic. I'm all about networking. And so Beth Beth connected both of us uh, again or reconnected us and it just worked out perfectly and our schedules aligned. Well, you know, we're going to talk about networking. We're going to talk about talent acquisition and, and all things around that. But I always like to ask our guests to start the show to share a brief highlight of your organization, uh, which is Hernco. And how yes. do you serve your customers? So people don't necessarily know Hernco. That's the privately held parent company of DM Leasing. Well, DM Leasing is all over social media, all over the radio. We've been around since 1976. And so we're actually very proud of celebrating. 45 years of being in business. And so in the name, it says leasing, automotive leasing, DNM automotive leasing, but we also finance and, and do cash deals. And uh, we've been uh, basically supplying uh, the, the entire state of Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, uh, and Houston for, for decades now vehicles. Uh, and so we're in the automotive sandbox, but we're not a traditional dealership. And so we're, we're very proud that we have over a billion dollars worth of, uh, of inventory and vehicles on the road today servicing and, and, and keeping thousands and thousands of clients very satisfied uh, with their automotive needs. You know, I, I remember uh, listening to the ticket radio and that, that little jingle, DMM <laughs> leasing jingle would play and it's in that's my right. head right now. <laughs> so, that's oh right. man, that's fantastic. Listen, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I, I, I know we, we, we know each other through our, our business, but I want to take a deeper dive today. And, and sure. I want to I want to know uh, more about Jed Gifford. So I would love for you to share the Jed Gifford story. Like, where did you grow up and how in the world did you get into talent acquisition and leadership? Sure. Well, it's an interesting story. And it starts it actually in Fargo, North Dakota. My parents are actually originally from Syracuse, New York, but my dad had taken a position in the Midwest. And so my brother and I were actually born in Fargo, North Dakota, home of the bison. Uh, but uh, I consider myself a Texan. We moved uh, to, to North Texas, actually Plano, uh, when I was five years old. And so for all intents and purposes, outside of two years in high school, my freshman and sophomore year, I- I'm a Texan. I'm very proud to say I'm, I- I'm from Texas. Uh, I'm like the bumper sticker. I wasn't born here, but I got here as fast as I could. And so um, grew up in Texas, grew up in Plano, uh, was very involved early on in, in sports, but I recognized that I wasn't going to be a-, a college or professional athlete. And so Kind of my passion is always about storytelling, uh, and so I really pursued journalism. And so uh, in high school, uh, I, I wrote for the student newspaper, wrote for the yearbook. Uh, in college, I went to the University of Texas down in down in Austin, so hook 'em horns, uh, and really focused on 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 writing for the the student newspaper, the Daily Texan. Uh, worked at the student radio station, but my passion was always, you know, why why can't I be Peter Jennings from ABC News or Bob Costas on, on NBC covering? Super Bowls and Olympics and that type of thing. And so that's really what I did. I, I majored in broadcast television uh, and you know, worked in t- TV on air and off air for about seven years doing news and sports. Sherman Dennison, Augusta, Georgia, Austin, Dallas, uh, the nomad TV life. Um, but people ask, so how did you go from being so passionate about journalism and storytelling and covering the stars win the Stanley Cup and the Cowboys at training camp and 
uh, you know, the SEC football and the, the 96 Olympics, all of that into, wait a minute, you're in talent acquisition, corporate talent acquisition. How did you do that? And uh, I would say it's really, I'm, I'm again, telling stories. I'm interviewing people. I'm just now doing it without a camera and a microphone. And so still using the, the skill set, who, what, when, where, and why. I'm, I'm fact finding, I'm doing detective work, um, but I have more of a work-life balance. And so what's great about what I did early in my career is it helped me build structure. It helped me really uh, hone my craft on, on networking and, and finding out what people are looking for and, and how I can assist, assist them in their, in their careers and, and, and their own personal stories. And so uh, I've had kind of two careers, Bruce, one previously in broadcast television and now a, a second career over the last 20 years uh, in, in corporate talent acquisition, the executive search recruiting agency world. I love that. You know, every time uh, someone tells me they're from Fargo, North Dakota, and you probably get this, I always think about the movie Fargo. Which, which doesn't, wasn't, t- didn't take place in Fargo. It took a place in Minnesota. That's what's crazy. It's a wonderful, you know, movie, but, you know, I'm glad North Dakota State and the football program has been featured on ESPN College Game Day has kind of, uh, I guess, stripped that away. But yeah, it, it gets a bad rap and it's, it's a beautiful Midwest, uh, upper Midwest uh, city and, and community. But, uh, but no, you're exactly right. It was Fargo, but the whole movie takes place in Minnesota. So who, who knows, right? Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Hey, I want to, I, I, I do want to get into uh, a little bit of some of the people that really have helped you along the way. But I want to, I mean, first of all, you have a, you definitely have a radio television voice. <laughs> I mean, so I can definitely see your broadcasting career. Uh, but you mentioned storytelling, and I, I want to dive into that because I have uh, Jimmy Richards on mm-hmm. the show. He is also a talent acquisition leader at Interstate Batteries. And he talked about the importance of storytelling. Just kind of talk a little bit about what, why is that so important and why do you love that so much? Sure. Well, I, I think I really enjoy carrying the flag uh, of my company and being proud of, of the companies I've worked for in the past. Uh, I'm now back in automotive, got recruited. We'll get into this probably a little bit later, but I got recruited by the, the actual CFO of Hernco and DNM. He found me on LinkedIn passively with an email, email message. So, uh, but I'm proud of carrying the flag uh, and, and being an ambassador uh, uh, of the company. Uh, and that's storytelling. I get to tell the story, the mm. or- backstory, the, what we're doing uh, with, with Hernco and DNM and our various, uh, various other business uh, units and, and departments. And so I, I continue to be able to be a, a broadcaster. I'm just broadcasting what, what DNM and our various other companies are all about. And that's storytelling and, and sharing it, you know, either over the phone or via uh, a video interview or, or ideally in person. And so storytelling is at the core of, of what a company is all about and, you know, where we've been and where we want to go. You know, when, Jed, it's, it's interesting, you know, here we're, we're talking about your broadcast career early on and, and now your corporate career. But, you know, did you ever envision back then? That, I mean, this like what we're doing now is like broadcast TV. Did it is. Ever it is. Think I think that we would have this today. Well, the technology is immense. I, when I was just talking with my with my wife about over the last what's happened over the last 25 years with just the World Wide web and the internet and and how I'm you know you and I are both filling the frame perfectly right we're not <laughs> we're filling uh, the screen and and so we are in broadcasting and what I think has helped with what I do with zoom interviews talking with candidates and vendors is I'm comfortable on camera I'm comfortable on a zoom I talked to somebody actually this morning who had never been on a, a video interview we use zoom as our format. Uh, but he had never been on a Zoom. And so you want to dress for success. You want to be presenting yourself and your company that you're representing uh, in the best possible light. And so it is amazing the technology, what's happened over the last 25 years. When I was, after I'd left uh, uh, local television, I worked for a company in Las Colinas where we partnered with over 200 TV stations and networks around the country. So I was an account manager. I was a talent scout. And so I was helping these TV stations and networks around the country find weather, sports, anchors, news, orders and we started with literally VHS tapes and then DVDs and now it's all internet link and so it has definitely uh, transformed um, given technology and, and what we're doing right now on a zoom uh, how quickly we're able to uh, you know talk to someone uh, pretty instantaneously it's pretty amazing and uh, and kind of if you think about it kind of blows your mind yeah and I know that uh, I know it's been a real advantage for 
uh, candidates and, and the you know the the hiring professionals, town acquisition leaders. I mean, uh, there's just so many areas that it's helped. Hey, I want to I want to ask you. Uh, speaking of helping, you know, mm-hmm. you you uh, you didn't start out where you are now. I mean, it took you a while to get to where you are now. I did I, I'm did. I'm curious. Were there some people that helped you along the way? I would always like to call them, you know, mentors or just people sure. in your life that helped you along the way. And, and what did they do that were, were made them such good mentors for you? Sure. Well, I, I'll start right from the very beginning uh, while I was in college and in, interning at a TV station. I'll, I'll start there and then work my way through mm-hmm. into corporate corporate uh, uh, environments, Fortune 100, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies. It was Tobin Vaughn, actually, a newscast producer at, at NBC 36 in Austin, who was the intern coordinator. I worked for him. And, and he really kind of set the tone for my, my broadcast career right from the beginning because I knew this is what I wanted to pursue, pursue uh, as a career. And he really, he, he said something that still resonates with me today. Is something tough, is something or, or something you do tough or stupid, right? Pretty quick, two questions. Is something tough or stupid? And really, how do you approach it? And so, you know, that seems like a simple kind of odd question, but that really resonates with me in, term, in terms of, what I'm doing on doing on a daily basis, right? It, is it is it something frivolous and not necessary? Is it something that I need to uh, you know showcase my skill set and and really toughen up? And so uh, it really kind of approaches how I approach my work ethic and daily life in terms of you know making sure I'm not stupid and make sure I'm tough enough for whatever assignments ahead of me. Uh, I would say uh, folks that I've worked with when I was at, at KDFW Fox Four, Mike Ducey uh, and Kevin Morrell were influential in and how I go about my business and acting like a professional. I think that's mm. important. Um, then Sandra Connell at Talent Dynamics, the, the company that I, that I shared earlier, where we partnered with over 200 TV stations and networks. She's an industry icon uh, and basically built a company uh, from scratch. And so I'm very privileged to have worked for her. And then as I transitioned away from broadcast television for more of a work-life balance, uh, I would say uh, folks that I uh, worked with, Vic Keller and Lori and I at the Van Tile Group, which is now Berkshire Hathaway Automotive. Uh, I would say Brian Rankin, uh, my, my boss at, at Lennox International, and now my current uh, executive, Greg Buell, uh, who, is, who found me on LinkedIn and who is the Hernco DNM CFO. I've learned a, a little bit of everything from these individuals that really has allowed me to, to be who I am today. Um, and I'm very proud to, to stay, stay in contact with them and, and, and consider them mentors. Well, I appreciate everything you shared there. And it sounds like you've been surrounded by some extraordinary leaders. Yes. And I uh, always like to share this, though, about the, the mentoring uh, piece of it. And that is, you kind of mentioned it when you're talking about Mike Ducey, and you mentioned that he taught you how to act like a professional. And that's the one thing I noticed about leaders that live life in the leadership lane is that not only were they surrounded by people that showed them how, how to be, and who to be, uh, but now they're now they can show others how they or who they should be too, just by their uh, just by the way they go and and, and about their business as a professional. Uh, that's pretty special. Well, I think because he's a public figure, right? He's on television five days a week, six days a week. He has a public persona, and then I also I knew him, you know, off air, and so you know he's someone that has been in the, the Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, market for now over 25 years with Dale Hansen retiring. He's now the dean uh, of broadcasters. And so, uh, you know, even though I m- might not be working with him anymore, it's been it been a little bit since we worked together, we're still in contact. And so I, I, I take pride in, um, you know, his, his professionalism and, and his polish, uh, you know, even though he's considered the fourth muser on, on the ticket in Dallas uh, and, and they poke fun at him, you know, he, what you see is what you get. And, and I try to uh, aspire to do that every day, right? No one is perfect, uh, but you try to put your best foot forward uh, and, and just be transparent, uh, be honest, upfront, uh, and, and and be true to yourself. And, and that really resonates with people. Man, that is so good. I, I love that. I appreciate you sharing that. I uh, I want to ask you this around. Uh, well, I always like to use the term "find your lane." Like, when did you find your lane? Because you were again, you were in in broadcast journalism early on. Now you're sure. in corporate recruiting. Was there a time where you you like you just found your calling? Well, I would say probably when I was at Talent Dynamics. So I had left, you know, the the day to day of a broadcast television news newsroom sports department. And, and when I was at Talent Dynamics, before I kind of 
transition completely uh, into a, a corporate town acquisition environment because people um, really reached out to me uh, for my, my expertise. They view, viewed me as an industry insider, as an as a SME subject matter expert. And so that's really continued throughout my career in, in corporate talent acquisition. People come to me because they know that you know, I, have it, I have the answer, or if I don't have the answer, I'm going to work hard to get the answer and then follow up with them. And so I would probably say uh, from my time at Talent Dynamics starting in 2000, so over the, nat- over the last probably 20 years, I've really been on that leadership lane, really focusing on, on, on honing my craft and getting better. And so it's just built on itself every, every stop I've been on uh, along the road, pun intended there, right? Uh, keep keeping my vehicle, uh, my, my personal and professional development, um, you know, on, on the straight and narrow. Uh, but it probably started back at Talent Dynamics when I was seen as a, uh, you know, it, with internal and inside stakeholders, as well as vendors and outside partners, as, as, a, as a go-to guy hmm. uh, in terms of being able to be counted on, relied on, uh, and, and someone that would, uh, would, would make the best decision possible. You know, when you uh, talk about that, I think about, uh, I think I might have mentioned this to you, but I've uh, just finished writing my book. It comes out in October. All right. Life in the Leadership Lane. Sure. And uh, the, the, to parallel with the podcast. But one of the things I talk about uh, in the last chapter is the importance of belief. Belief. And it sounds like there's some people that believed in you, uh, Talent Dynamics, uh, as you found your lane in that particular area. How important is belief? Uh, and, and what do you try to do to instill that in others? Sure. I, I would say it starts with confidence, hmm. not, not having an ego, not being cocky, but just confidence in your ability to, to impact others, impact what you're doing, ask, at, impacting what you're expected to do on a daily basis. And so, you know, I love that word because, you know, I think Jimmy Johnson, the, the, the Cowboys head coach talked about, he believed they were going to win Super Bowls, right? I believe that I'm going to make a difference with, with whatever I'm doing, right? And, and I've hopefully, hopefully instilled that with my wife, my, my college-age daughter, and other people in my sphere of influence, because I, I believe what Jimmy Johnson believes, right? If you believe it, it will happen, right? It's not a woulda, coulda, shoulda, right? It's got to, you have to believe. It's kind of giving me goosebumps talking about it right now on the podcast here, Bruce, in terms of you have to believe you can do something. It's that innate confidence. Now, does that happen overnight? No, I'm different than I was 25, 30 years ago. I wish I'd been able to tell my, my 15-year-old self that. But, but it does come with believing that you can do something and then instilling that, 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 that confidence, that wisdom in others. And then, then, then it basically, it's, it's uh, uh, organically, they'll start believing in themselves and, and have that confidence. And so uh, it, it's very timely that Jimmy mentioned that during his Hall of Fame speech, because I truly believe it. Because if he didn't believe it, then, then Troy Aikman and, and Emmett and Michael and the other Cowboys wouldn't have believed that they were going to go from one in 15 to Super Bowl champions. And so, uh, you know, I'm all about uh, having a winning attitude, a positive attitude, because if you have, do have a positive attitude, that's where the confidence comes into. That is so good. You know, we, uh, and by the way, for those of you listening right now, you need to get out your pen, get out your notepad, get out your journal. You need to be taking notes here because there's going to be some gems I was, uh, we're taping this in August, and this is going to actually uh, go live uh, first week of October. And uh, the the Hall of Fame speech uh, just finished. And yes, I heard Jimmy Johnson say that. Uh, They said, you know, why why did you say that? You know, is it confident? He said, I believed. I believed. I was like, that is so great. Hey, I want to, I want to talk leadership 2021. One of the things I do like to ask my guests, you know, there's so many different, uh, I don't know, definitions or perspectives around leadership. If someone asked you, how would you define leadership? What, how, how would you, what would you say to that? I think it's pretty, pretty easy. We don't have to write, uh, you know, a college thesis about leadership. I think it's truly being an open door. I think it's being an active listener. I think it, lead, it, it means lead by example. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. I mean, those are what, five, six things that someone can do to be a leader, not a manager, right? Be a leader. And, and I think that's, you know, regardless of, uh, of your size of organi- organization, how much someone, how much experience someone has or the hourly salary or commission position, you can do those things. And those are basic, I think, basic building blocks, basic blocking and tackling, using the football analogy, that someone can do to really make a difference within an organization, regardless of it's pi- uh, you know, privately held, family-owned, public, 
uh, you know, whatever, whatever size of the organization. But the key is, is, is be authentic, be authentic. I love that word authentic. I, uh, I will tell you that uh, you're right on, you're right on with leadership. And I, I love how you shared all those different things. I want to ask you about leading and talent acquisition. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm curious, like, what do you enjoy most about talent acquisition? I mean, and, and, and times have changed a little bit, haven't they? They have. Well, I mean, I, I think 20 years ago, people were using like Career Builder and Monster, and now it's more Indeed and LinkedIn, right? And so even our recruiting platforms have changed, right? The, the vehicles we're using, the, the, the spend we're, we're, we're do, dealing with budget-wise on an annual basis has changed. And so what gets me really excited is finding that diamond in the rough, finding that passive candidate that really checks a lot of boxes, right? There's no perfect candidate, right? There's no perfect resume. There's no perfect LinkedIn profile. There's no perfect interview, but you can certainly get, try to get as close as possible. And, and what really gets me excited is, is finding someone that wasn't necessarily looking at our opportunity or at our company. And I'm knocking on, on, their, on their door and we, we come together, we make a money marriage uh, and, and they're a fantastic employee day one and then five, 10, 15 years down the road. Uh, when I interviewed with Hernco and DM Leasing, they talked about we want to find uh, somebody that's going to work for us for the next 10, 15, 20 years. They told me that during the interview. So I went in knowing that they're not just, this is not just going to be something that they're going to uh, take lightly. And so I approach it the same way, right? I want somebody that's going to be a difference maker, regardless of their position within the organization. We're all on the same team. Uh, and so uh, for me, it's finding that that difference maker, regardless if it's a, a, you know, a top producing sales, sales agent, or someone in accounting or finance, or support staff, administrative uh, uh, clerk, whatever the case may be, because they all are, are, we're all basically rowing in the same direction. And that's what's, that's what gets me excited uh, about building a team, um, because we're all, we're all wanting to uh, excel and finding those, those, those A players. And maybe they go from being an A player to an A plus player because of the culture, the environment, the onboarding, the coaching, the training. So all of that I'm involved in on a daily basis. And I've been doing that uh, now for over a decade and that it, it doesn't get old for me. I feel your excitement. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, let me ask you this. Is there a, you know, before, before this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, the, 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 you know, one of the themes in, in, H, in the HR space was there's a war on talent. And here we are, you know, in, in the middle of it, and it's still the s- same thing. There's a war on talent. Mm-hmm. Is there a war on talent, and, number one? And number two, I, I just want to ask you, like, is remote work making things more challenging? Talk a little bit about that. Sure. So I would say that there is a... There is a battle in uh, mm-hmm. talent because there are a lot of great companies out there. Uh, it, primarily what I'm doing for, for Hernco and DNM is probably 90% sales related. And so there are a lot of great companies that are looking for great, talented sales individuals. So again, it goes back to storytelling. Why is my opportunity, right? Why is my position uh, and career um, job opening better than someone else's? And so I I, maybe it's a, maybe it's not necessarily quite a war, but it's definitely a battle because you have to really separate yourself from other other job postings, uh, other other talent acquisition professionals that are that are talking to these candidates as well. And so uh, you want to strike a chord with them uh, on why your opportunity uh, is better than some someone else's. Um, regarding um, you know the the actual idea of, of talent acquisition, I think it has gotten harder. Because some people over the last 12 to 18 months, because of a global pandemic and just loosening up of, of business practices, some people may or may not want to be in an office environment, right? They want that hybrid flexibility of working remotely or working from home five days a week or two, three days a week. And so finding, finding talent that are open to, depending on what type of work environment. And so for us, we're basically an in-office position. Some people do have the ability, for instance, to work remotely, and they've stayed remote since COVID because they've been a, a top producer. So there's, there's that flexibility. You earn that. You earn the ability to ha- have a, a more um, flexible schedule and, and, and work, work office environment. And so, but it, I, it has been more, um, I wouldn't say taxing, but it has definitely been more of an interesting uh, conversation the last 12 to, 12 to 16 months talking with candidates. Uh, of various experience levels, 
given given the, the work environment, the hybrid, the remote, the, you know, some people have never done a Zoom before, or maybe they're so burned out on Zooms, they, they want to meet people in person. And so um, it, it's, it's a balancing act, Bruce. It really, it really is. And finding that sweet spot of folks that, you know, fit a specific need within an organization. No, that's fantastic. Hey, I want to, I want to ask you this, and this is really for all the listeners out there right now that they're listening and they're trying to find that next. Of course, I heard you said you're hiring salespeople. So mark we, that we down. Are, if you're in I'm, in bro- I'm in growth mode all over the company. <laughs> I mean, we have we have dealerships west of Fort Worth near Wichita Falls. I've got a finance company. I've got a pre-owned operation. I've got uh, literally we have all kinds of, uh, of opportunities. And so if someone is listening and they're interested, I'd love to network with them. Well, let me ask you this. Let, let's get, let's do, let's take a deeper dive. Let's give them a few tips. Uh, sure. Something you said earlier. And you talked about the importance of camera presence. Yes. And you said that early on in your broadcasting, that helped you in broadcasting. Talk a little bit about the importance of camera presence, because I, th- I would think that's pretty important. If you, if you uh, get a resume from a candidate and you said, hey, let's have an interview and you're on video, I think that's going to be a pretty, pretty important. Would you well, that say is that? Deemed, in the HR world, a video interview is deemed a, re- a legitimate interview. That counts as an in-person potentially, right? And so depending on your organization. And so, you know, being dressed for success, not wearing a, you know, a backward baseball cap and a t-shirt to, to meet someone like you or I for an interview, um, you know, you want to make a good first impression, mm. right? lasting impression. And so being camera ready is, is filling the frame, right? It is literally dressing for success. You don't necessarily have to wear a, a, a coat and tie, but definitely, uh, a, a professional attire uh, and, and be ready uh, for, for a Zoom. And then obviously for an in-person, be ready to, uh, as I like to use this phrase, go win the interview to win the office. And if you're dressed for success and, and you're camera ready, meaning in-person or either on a, on a, on a video interview, you, you're, you're, you give yourself a greater chance to make a, a great first impression and a lasting impression. But yeah, go win the interview to go win the office. I mean, it, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, Bruce. I love that. Go win the interview to win the office. That is fantastic. Yes. Hey, I want to ask you this. What about for some of the candidates out there that, um, you know, they're not having success in actually getting that interview. Do you ever, do you have any tips on, you know, what people might think about whenever they're, you know, that might, that they might want to include on their resume? Sure. Well, for me, the resume is important, but not to say it's a throwaway, but it, it's, it's for the applicant tracking system, the ATS. For me, I think having someone having a, a robust digital footprint, i.e. their own personal website, or more importantly, their LinkedIn profile is huge, right? Because we're all going to Google, we're going to uh, Google your name. You're, they're going to Google my name. Who are we, right? And, and if you're able to tell your story, again, going back to storytelling, uh, you're able to really facilitate a dialogue just based off your digital footprint. What does your LinkedIn profile say? You've got a professional headshot, right? It, you could use your, 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 your iPhone. It doesn't have to be professionally done headshot, but something that really represents who you are, right? As, as, a, as a first impression photo. And then kind of your, your headline. What, what are you looking to accomplish? What are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to stay in the same type of role and position? Are you looking to pivot and your, and your career aspirations? But I really put great emphasis in talking with candidates, talking with folks that, that reach out to me, network with me, our referrals to me, focus on the LinkedIn profile, right? I'm a walking testimonial. Twice I have received job opportunities and accepted positions off my LinkedIn profile. They had never seen my resume. It was my LinkedIn profile. So make sure you've got great content and are telling a great story on your LinkedIn profile. You know, they talk about the two minute elevator speech. That doesn't exist anymore. Then they, then they talked about the 30 second commercial about your personal pitch, right? That doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to go back to, you know, a TV broadcast TV term. It's the sound bite. What are you, who are you in about eight to 12 seconds, right? What can you tell somebody about who you are in, in, in under 30 seconds? And that's key. And the same thing goes about the LinkedIn profile and the resume. What's on the, what's above the fold? I'll use an old newspaper term. What's above the fold, right? What's, what gravitates, uh, what, what, what is going to capture someone's attention, you know, real quick. Uh, and so that, that's where, what I really tell people is, is don't bury something on the bottom of page two, right? Focus on only having a two-page resume, but 
what separates you from somebody else? And, and this, is my, this is my phrase. I actually have copyrighted, Bruce. What's your sizzle factor, right? What separates you from somebody else, right? Give me a reason to pick up the phone to give you a call and set up an interview and hire you. What's your sizzle factor? I absolutely love that. It's fantastic. Sizzle factor. Remember right. that. Write that down, folks. Hey, I want to ask you this then. Um, since we're talking about LinkedIn, so important, and I agree with that. Um, what did you do? Like you said, you've been contacted and, yes. and you're a walking testimonial. Yes. How did you, did you go out and get some tips on building your LinkedIn profile or did you just keep laying bricks? How did you get sure. your LinkedIn profile? I, I, I would say it? it's a combination of a lot of things, Bruce. I, I took it upon myself for own, my own personal and professional development. I went to LinkedIn, LinkedIn connect, like we talked about, I've gone to LinkedIn uh, seminars on how to build out and uh, build out a robust profile. So it's been a, a work in progress and, 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 uh, the last probably five, five to 10 years, I've been working with individuals on how to enhance their, their LinkedIn profile, right? And so we start with the LinkedIn profile, and then it morphs into the actual paper resume for an in-person interview or an applicant tracking system. So it, it is it is something that you need to it, work on, right? You need to build it out. It's You're, you're not going to get to 500 or more connections overnight, but you can certainly get there. You can work on those online recommendations that LinkedIn has made it very easy to, to secure. You can build out your, your employment page and your, uh, your achievements, your honors, uh, your headline, the about section, right? They, they've made it, LinkedIn uh, has made it very easy to, to sell yourself uh, and to tell your own story, going back to storytelling, right? And you can do that, um, but it literally takes, it takes time and effort uh, to, to put yourself out there, be proactive and network, and, and LinkedIn is a great tool for that. These things that you're sharing right now are invaluable. And I guarantee you there's someone out there listening right now that says, you know what, I'm going to go to my LinkedIn and I'm going to update that. And so uh, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Hey, I do want to ask one more question around that because one of the areas I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, uh, it says coach, coaching yes. and, and social media. So I, I have a two-part question. Uh, well, uh, I think you answered the first question about how you coach people on their LinkedIn. It sounds like that's part of what you're doing. But the second question I have is putting your headline, uh, like for me, it, it says, you know, vice president of corporate relocation, author, board member of Texas. Sheriff. But then I have others that have maybe a quote or some just have some different energizing words. How important is that? Is that right underneath your picture? Sure. I, I think the LinkedIn headline is huge. I also think the about section is huge. It's all, it's all about SEO, right? Search engine optimization. You want people to find you regardless if you're in, in an executive C-suite role, right? Someone like me who's in town HR recruiting, uh, sales. And so I, whatever, whatever you think is going to, you know, grab someone's attention, you know, on mine, you know, I, I use about, you know, I like the rule of three, right? So, you know, the rule of three or maybe five, don't, don't really utilize odd numbers. Maybe that's just something that's quirky about me, but I like the rule of three. And so, you know, for me, it's, it's communication, it's talent acquisition. You know, I put on there a coach and I've kind of been that career coach or, or guide. I've, I've worked with executives to build out their LinkedIn profile. I've done it at, at previous employers. I, I've done it now with, with DNM and Hernco. Um, but the key thing for the headline in the about section is, is leverage keywords and buzzwords, right? You don't necessarily have to have your current job title as your headline. We're going to see that later uh, below in, in your LinkedIn profile, but come up with, with keywords and buzzwords that, that represent who you are, because I am a career coach, right? I am a coach. I am a trainer. I am a mentor. I am an MC. Um, and that really stemmed from uh, literally following my time at Talent Dynamics, and then people like Whitman, how did you get out of television? You're now in corporate America. What did you do? And so people were literally knocking on my door through through Facebook or LinkedIn or word of mouth and calling me, emailing me, and, and helping them uh, put their digital footprint together. And so it's very important to have keywords and buzzwords uh, throughout your LinkedIn profile, especially on that headline because you're more than just your job title. You and I are more than just our job title. I'm, you're more than the VP of relocation. I'm more than just a talent acquisition manager, right? We have different skill sets. We have different attributes that, that tell, tell, us, tell us and tell others who we are and what we're all about, right? Our, our personal journey, our story. 
Man, that's energizing. I love that. That is so, so good. I appreciate you sharing that. Hey, I want to ask you, you also, as we're, as we're talking about leading uh, in our careers, you also do some volunteer uh, leadership as well. It looks like you are uh, support ATD in Dallas, as well as it uh, looks like maybe the Habitat Humanity. How, how important is volunteer leadership? Talk a little bit about that. Well, because I think it allows me to, you know, get outside the, the, the business sandbox, right? I, I'm able to, I'm very passionate about Habitat for Humanity. You know, I've been involved with Richardson Area Interfaith Habitat for 20 years now, and, and we build one to two houses a year. So it's not necessarily about the, the number of houses, the volume of houses, but we're very proud that we've built over 40 homes over the last 25 years within the organization. Um, but I, I'm stretching myself. I'm not necessarily, if you ask my wife, I'm not very much a handyman. But for, for a few Saturdays, for a few Saturdays every year, I get out there with a tool belt and, and, and I'm a worker bee. And, and, I've, and I've learned more skills. I've, and and I'm, I'm, I'm working uh, my brain and my body uh, in, in different ways than just talent acquisition and human resources. Uh, same thing with ATD. I did, I, I reached out and, and started uh, networking and joined ATD uh, over three years ago for my own personal development. I wasn't initially getting that from my my uh, employer at the time. And so, you know, I went out and searched an organization where I could personally learn and grow. I'm a big believer in having to not just be idle, right? And so, you know, that's why I'm involved with Habitat. I'm involved with ATD and how can I help, you know, raise my hand, right? Get tapped on the shoulder for, for assignments and, and projects. And so I get great satisfaction in helping both these organizations because they may be getting something out of me, but it, it, the big picture, I'm getting probably more out of it than they are. Uh, and that really satisfies me and, and, and who I am at the, in my core. Let me ask you this. For someone listening right now, we talked about the candidates and, and how they can, you know, uh, uh, elevate their presence on camera, their LinkedIn profile. What about, like, what about networking? How important is it to network as a candidate? Do you, do you, uh, do you ever find candidates networking? Or do you think that's uh, something uh, candidates just think about? Well, I, I think regardless if you're in an active or passive job search, you should always be networking. Mm. They always ABC, always be closing, right? From a sales perspective, I think it's always be networking. It doesn't matter if you're in an active job search, you're underemployed, you're unemployed, you're, you have, you're, you're, you have job dissatisfaction, you should always be networking, right? Because you never know what, what, what one rock would, you know, uh, uncover another opportunity. Um, you know, I think it was actually through my time at Talent Dynamics is how I made my way to Van Tile Group. Someone I knew in broadcast television, his sister-in-law was working at Van Tile Group. So it's truly the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. And so I, I'm a big proponent of that. I, I'm probably, you know, employee number one when it comes to six degrees of Kevin Bacon. So networking is huge. Don't just start networking when you're in a job search. You need to always be networking. Always be networking. A B N. That is fantastic. A B N. Love that. I love it. Hey, I want to. I want to shift gears just a little bit. And and you talked a little bit about you're leading your team, but I want to talk about leading Jed. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to know. You know, are you an early riser? What, what do you have a daily practice? Yes. That you have <laughs> that keeps you on track. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I used to be up really late because when I was in broadcast television, I was typically working two to midnight. Now, obviously, in corporate America, I'm more of a Monday through Friday, you know, eight to six kind of guy. But no, I'm definitely an early riser, uh, you know, always kind of have, you know, my, 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 my head is spinning, my, you know, my brain is always working on things. And so uh, I'm always very busy, but I'm, I, I consider myself very highly organized and well-rounded. Uh, outlook like crazy. I color code. Uh, outlook. I, I'm really, uh, I block my day. I learned that in the executive search world. Blo blocking your day is important to stay on task, right? And also do what's, do what's closest to the finish line or closest to the dollar. What, what do you need to do today that needs to get done, right? Do what, do what's, uh, you know, not necessarily um, the easiest thing to do because you could easily check, check off a box doing the easy, but do things that are going to have make the most impact and a lot of times that, that could be something that's even most important, right? As it relates to, to hiring, don't wait till tomorrow to, to create an offer letter or, or extend a verbal offer, right? Do it then and there. Don't wait 24 hours because you may lose that candidate going back to that, that war or battle of talent, right? Do it right then and there. But so, no, I'm, I'm an early riser. I'm very active, very busy. 
Um, you know, I'm primarily in the office, but when I do work from home, I probably start my day earlier and end my day later working from home. So I'm not one of those uh, folks that, um, you know, is, is, is uh, uh, laying back and, 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 and sitting on the couch. I, I'm a very active professional. Yeah, I uh, I'm with you on that. I would I would say when I'm in the when I work at home, I probably work much longer hours. I start earlier and work later. That's fantastic. Listen, I appreciate you sharing that. I think the block in the time, yeah. and I love closest to the finish line. That's fantastic. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that for sure. Hey, Good. I want to ask you. You've given some incredible incredible advice today, but I always like to ask my guests: Has there ever been in, have you ever got any or received any advice that was just so good you just always find yourself sharing that with others i would say for for me is be true to yourself right you know they you hear the sometimes the phrase fake it until you make it but are, are is that really who you are right and so you know the the advice i've been given that i that i really hold true is is really work hard, play hard, right? Put a smile on your face, stay positive, um, and and just really be grateful. I mean, I think I've probably picked up that. I would probably say that over the last five or 10 years is, is is be grateful for what you have, the people around you, your family, your friends, your sphere of influence. Um, So, so all of that, I think it goes back to maybe not necessarily a hard skill, but maybe the soft skills of, of gratitude uh, and being, being, going back to my word earlier, authentic. And so uh, that's what I try to tell people is because people will resonate with people. Uh, if you're in a candidate or you're in an interview, um, if, you're, if you're who you are and you're authentic and true and upfront and transparent, that resonates with people. Uh, and so, you know, they talk about hard skills and soft skills during interview. The soft skills really um, are a lot of times the tiebreaker, right? Mm-hmm. To, can they read the body language, your smile, what's going on with your eyes and, uh, and, and your face and that type of thing. Your body language can be the tiebreaker that listen, that's right on. I, I had Ed Curtis. He's the CEO of Y Texas uh, on for show number 10. And he said that very same thing, be true to yourself, right? You don't realize the power that has, you know, a lot of times you see, different people and you're like i need to be like them or more like them but it's always about more of hey take the inspiration from them and make it yours right mm-hmm. well and i think what people have told me through the years if you go on my linkedin profile and read my recommendations for instance i am who i am right i, I haven't changed over the last 20 25 years across different industries across different companies what you see is what you get and hopefully that is is someone that you can respect and admire and 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 people value as, as a manager, as a leader, as a mentor. Hey, I'm glad you brought that up. I want, I want to touch on that before we go to this time to accelerate the last thing. And that is LinkedIn recommendations. I did notice you had like over 50 recommendations, which it, it, first of all, it says a lot about you as a leader and as a person, Uh, but not only have you received that many, you've given away many as well. How important is the LinkedIn recommendations and how should people go about really trying to uh, accelerate in that area? Well, you, you don't necessarily need to have 50 like me, but, but I, I've been in different industries, different sandboxes with different companies. And, and it, gives, it gives folks that want to know more about who I am a, a good cross-section, a good reference point of, of who I am, regardless if it's someone who offered it up as a peer, as a supervisor, as an executive, a vendor partner I've had. And so uh, I, I think getting LinkedIn recommendations is the, is the new version of, of, of a paper reference list, right? Mm. It allows someone to instantly know more about who you are. And so I put great stock, great value uh, in, in, your, in your recommendation list on LinkedIn without question. Yeah, that is so good. I didn't think about it that way. That is, that is today's references. And <laughs> it you know, is. And, and it something is. else about that too is that when you get these recommendations, it also boosts your confidence. And when you give those recommendations, it makes you think through how you, you know, what you want to say. And that also is, is part of your development and growth, isn't it? Well, uh, yes. And I would definitely say before you accept a recommendation, make sure you read through it, make sure there aren't any misspellings or typos because you don't want to accept it and then have to go back to that person 
and alter it and, and edit it and copy edit it. So make sure you read through it and it, and it sounds right. <laughs> it's the little things. It's the old, it's the old copy editor me, making sure it, it, it's spelled and, and said correctly. You have given some incredible uh, value here, and I appreciate that. I want to, I want to, I want to shift over here to what I call "It's time to accelerate." I told you the show goes by super fast. It does. <laughs> it does, and because we're having a purposeful conversation, and it's yes. so energizing. Hey, I want to ask you: uh, Would you rather read a book or listen to a podcast? Can I say both? Yes. So I love a good hardback, right, or a good paperback, but podcasts are cool too because they're informative and they're kind of bite-sized. And so, you know, to answer your question, I'm going to say both. I'm going to say both. That's fantastic. Got any uh, favorite books or podcasts that you've uh, run across in the last year? Well, I, obviously yours, your podcast. Yes. Everyone needs to tune in to, to your podcast. Um, I, I'm really, I'm a sports junkie, Bruce. I, I'm basically, I'm like, like music. I have different genres, right? I, I, you, you can, you can catch me watching all kinds of different things on uh, with sports and regarding books and podcasts. It's literally pretty eclectic. I think that goes back to me wanting to be a, um, uh, you know, a, a constant learner, right? It, uh, there's not one subject that I, that I uh, dominates my conversation, but I, I try to be as well-rounded as possible. So not one in particular outside of your podcast. You know, you mentioned earlier, you talked a little bit about gratitude. I, what, what are you grateful for? Well, our health, Right. Given given the global pandemic over the last year plus my immediate and extended family, my wife, Sherry, my daughter, Avery, um, just my friend group, my professional network. Uh, I'm all about being happy and staying positive. And, and I lean into those people um, and help them and they help me. Your energy is fantastic. And, and speaking of energy, I, I want to know outside of talent acquisition. Uh, and some of the things we talked about, uh, what energizes you? You do you do anything personally, like uh, any uh, around football or sure, exercising? Sure. What, what, well, what energizes I, I, you? I, I used to I used to play softball uh, in a in a co-ed league in a men's league. Not so much anymore. My my passion, I guess, is watching sports, watching movies. Uh, I'm a huge fantasy football player, and so I'm really looking forward to this upcoming season. As you can imagine, I am an energetic guy. <laughs> Super Bowl winning team is named Enthusiasm. That should probably be my middle name. My fantasy football team name is Enthusiasm. And so I think that resonates with who I am as personally and professionally and how I approach life, how I approach work. Um, and so, no, I, I'm a sports guy, right? I, I enjoy, uh, you know, watching all kinds of sports and, and looking forward to fantasy football. Hey, sign me up for Team Enthusiasm. That is fantastic. There you go. I love that. Hey, I got two more questions. Uh, first question I want to ask is, you know, like I mentioned, we're, we're, we're this is going to air in October, mm -hmm. uh, 2021. I, I'm just curious, like, what are you, like, what are you really looking forward to, you know, as we close out 2021 and, and then get into 2022? Sure. Well, you know, I, again, I'm probably, a, uh, you know, I live in the fast lane as well, just personally and professionally, but I could easily be a man of leisure. And so I'm looking forward to some, some time with family vacations right? And, and, and look at, you know, the, the Smoky Mountains in New England in, in the fall, hopefully, you know, uh, weather permitting and, and, and COVID permitting. But, you know, in terms of, you know, I don't really slow down throughout the year. We don't really have a slow period with what I do in town acquisition. And I'm always hunting, right? I'm not a farmer. I'm really hunting. And so uh, really for the rest of this year, Q3, Q4, Q1 of 2022, um, you know, it's really, uh, you know, full speed ahead in terms of, you know, going out and identifying great talent that are going to make an impact. Uh, the bottom line, I always talk about this is a phrase I use when I'm talking to candidates. For me, it's, it's about driving a, a profitable uh, candidate and, and employee experience, right? Having a great candidate experience becomes a profitable employee experience for both them and for us uh, from the employer side. And so uh, I'm just excited about what, what lies ahead just because um, there's a lot going on. Uh, and we're, we're very much in growth mode. And uh, that's what's exciting to me is that so much is so much is ahead of us, uh, you know, over the next three, five, 10 years that that gets me excited. And so for, for talent acquisition uh, um, and anything is possible, which which is exciting. Man, I know Hernco is uh, blessed to have you, my friend. Uh, that is fantastic. Hey, I want to ask you one 
final question this is the last question of the show. One of my favorite questions. And uh, here's the question. Uh, Jed, 10 years older is around the corner knocking at your door and you're going to go open that door. What's he going to tell you? Keep being who you are, right? Continue to produce at a high level, make an impact with your family, with your friends, uh, with Hern Co and DNM. Uh, and that, and that's the goal is to make a difference. You know, what, what is that? You know, I, I guess we're all, we're going to be here in 10 years, knock on wood, right? Knock on wood. Um, uh, but you know, what, what, what do you want your, your tombstone to say? What, what do you want your obituary to say? I've unfortunately lost a few, uh, habitat friends over the last year plus, and I've been able to read their, their wonderful obituaries. And, and I'm really mindful of that, right? Your reputation management. So what, what is your reputation going to be, be like? What is it going to say? What is it going to look like? And so I'm very cognizant of that. And so I would tell my, my younger self, my older self, keep that in mind, right? Keep being who you are. Man, I got to tell you, I got chills. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm listen, Jed, I'm so grateful for you coming on the show today and just sharing perspective and, and wisdom. Hey, if someone wanted to connect with you, learn a little bit more about, well, maybe about some of the jobs you're trying to fill, sure. or maybe you just want to talk about the podcast, how's the best way for them to connect? I would say the best way to reach me, I'm super active on LinkedIn. I'm on it every day. So, you know, Jed Gifford on LinkedIn. Uh, my Twitter is Gifford Jed. Uh, uh, in terms of career coaching, it's jedthecareercoach.com. I have my own website for that. Um, so yeah, just, just Google. They talk about Google yourself, right? Why don't you just Google Jed Gifford and you'll find my information. <laughs> I love it. I'll, uh, I'll put all of those links in the show notes. So people that listen could just click that link and you can connect with Jed and listen, you are definitely driving in the leadership lane. I appreciate everything you've shared today. I'm confident that someone out there is going to be better just because of this conversation. Uh, they may make a lane change or maybe even just it might validate, hey, everything I'm doing is what he said. I'm just going to keep going. So for that, Good. I say thank you. And most importantly, I appreciate your friendship. You bet, Bruce. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a blast. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I cannot wait to share this. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.